and if you've ever gone on a process like that you'll you'll it'll blow your socks off that the, the memories are are not just uh separate from you you live it when you when you see it mm-hmm. right there's emotion stored with it right it's it's a living breathing experience when we're talking about the cosmic storage we're actually talking about accessing that but we're talking about accessing that through the mind and the martial aspect was that actually when you're practicing martial arts you're using a martial mindset and when you're using a martial mindset you're aligning your physicality to your spirituality through your mentality science is something that's spec starts off speculatively right you know somebody comes up with a hypothesis uh around about something and what you said is you know how how does your body know when you cut yourself that it needs to heal itself well you know your body's got this intelligence that it knows exactly what to do hello my name is Lack Floyd and I'm the founder of Martial Mind Power and in today's podcast I have got with me Jitinda Palaha my co-host welcome Jitinda hello Lack Floyd Sifu Lack Floyd how you doing I am so excited about this new podcast that we're putting together. Yeah, me too. Me too. This is the first ever podcast uh that we're doing and uh so this is our uh inauguration uh, of the Martial Mind Power podcast where we will be discussing self mastery teachings uh, towards your ultimate self realization. Okay? And that's all inspired by martial arts and philosophy. and in particular um, uh, pivotal key people like Bruce Lee that have inspired us on our martial journeys to uh, be here right now with you sharing the uh, messages that we're going to share now jitender is going to pick the topic for today's podcast and uh, so i'm going to hand it over to jt uh, to uh, to do the honors on this okay so this is what we're going to use as our guide um called the art of thinking without thinking it's a massive book with uh coins is that right lex is coins is that what they call them coins yep that's coins right. coins okay who's coin <laughs> <laughs> mike mike alone's cousin <laughs> <laughs> um what i'm going to do i'm going to randomly open a page and then whatever topic comes up we're going to we're going to talk about that and see where that takes us yeah So okay, I've opened right. it up and the first page has come up by is uh cosmic storage. So um let me just sh- let me share the actual artwork with you on this one so for the readers you can see the um the visual on this okay to this. So I want to just read this extract and then we kind of discuss this in more detail. So it reads We think our brains store memories but there's no scientific evidence of this. other than that certain areas of the brain become active when accessing certain memories or thoughts our brain is merely a vessel for our mind the mind being a gateway to superconsciousness which is an ethereal space of water that has infinite oceanic storage for everything that ever was is and will be called akash in sanskrit that is how you can access past lives and karma otherwise known as your akashic records which need to be resolved in your current life so you can dissolve back into the ocean of consciousness okay wow does that's fairly loaded okay uh, yeah that's a big one for the first one right <laughs> <laughs> well that, well the beauty of it is is you know this is a martial mind power uh, podcast and the whole idea really is the I think the f- first place to start is talk about mind power and where the martial mind power name came from. And it was actually inspired by by uh, Dr. Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich and there's a really famous uh, quote that Dr. Napoleon Hill stated and that was what a man or woman can think uh, and believe he he or she can achieve, okay? Now it came from that and what that basically uh helped me understand and there was an epiphany that i had at that moment was that uh, your mind can create and manifest whatever whatever's coming into reality around you and um having been on the martial journey for many years from the age of uh 7 years old 
I, although I had a gap in between and then resuming it later in life, um, one of the biggest realizations was that actually martial arts is also doing that. And martial arts is not just about kicking and punching. It's a way of life. And as it being a way of life, it's also a way of um, uh, doing and being. And when you're everything that you do in order to become, it comes from the mind. So you have to think it in order to then act it. In order to act it, it could be physical, could be mental, could be emotional, could be spiritual. And uh, so your mind is a gateway to your body and your spirit. And it's the bit in between. But your brain is the organ that allows that access to happen. So your Akash or your gosh, as they say in Sanskrit, which is this uh, oceanic cosmic storage, which stores everything that ever was, is, and will be in it. In other words, um, for instance, I'll give you an idea. If you've ever had or ever heard of uh, past life regression, right? So if you've ever had that, or if you have ever heard of it, or if you... Um, I have read any stories about it. What's happening is people is when people like you and me can access their past life in order to understand their past life trauma that might manifest itself in this life that you need to resolve in order to be free of it. So you can liberate yourself um, and then move on and ascend. Now, as part of that process, <clears throat> it, you know, it says that, you know, if you can pa access past life memories, not just one life, but many lives right down to the origin of it all. Therefore, something is storing that. And if you're born out of, you know, um, uh, a female uh, egg cell and a male sperm cell coming together, how, does those, how do those two cells encapsulate the Akashic records? How? It's not possible. Right, mm -hmm. because they just minuter, right? Uh, but there's something greater at work here, and there's that divine intelligence that's, that's working. So this, when we're talking about the cosmic storage, we're actually talking about accessing that. But we're talking about accessing that through the mind. And the martial aspect was that actually, when you're practicing martial arts, you're using a martial mindset. And when you're using a martial mindset, you're aligning your physicality to your spirituality through your mentality, right? And that's exactly what's, what's going on. So that's your mind, uh, your body, your mind, and your spirit alignment. And that's essentially what's happening. So that's where the martial mind power name came from. And it's, this is such an apt uh, koan to start with. So, um, so, so you're talking about Napoleon Hill. So Napoleon Hill was saying, um, whatever the mind can conceive and believe in it can achieve yeah so the the conception idea that you have to put it in there in the first place yeah like think of it or whatever right so yeah. as, you, as you said think yeah and uh, and then to actually believe it uh, means that then you can go on to achieve it right that's correct that's awesome. correct it's very interesting what you were talking about where, you know when these two things come together how does that happen? There must be some sort of record to be able to access past lives and all that kind of stuff, right? It's, it's quite interesting. The, the, what came to my mind just then was um, about how even the human body has um, a blueprint on how it should be, right? Like if you cut yourself, it knows what to do. Yeah. It's like, well, how does it know to do that? Like, yeah. do you know what I mean? I mean, it's, it's your cells know to, okay, this, this, there's a leakage here. We need to cover it up and build it and repair it and all this kind of things. It's just it's so intelligent isn't it it's like where how does it know to do that i suppose that's the kind of things you're talking about there as well right absolutely so this is where the cosmic intelligence with all what i call divine intelligence comes into it each cell of our body has consciousness that consciousness is intelligent far beyond our comprehension um that you know science science is trying to help us understand the things that we might have no have experienced or want to believe or have hope and faith in, uh, but have not yet had the actual tangible experiences in some way, shape or form. Um, uh, therefore, science is there to try to help us understand our spirituality, which is, you know, the, the, the paradox here, which is they're complementary. Although in our Western culture, you know, they're kind of 
almost mutually exclusive but that's not the way that's not really the case um if you if you study the, uh, b famous scientists like albert einstein they will talk about spirituality and science being two part two sides of a coin they're indivisible right and one's one is validating the other's existence and vice versa right you know one can't exist without the other but the the spirit's always there this is the only difference science is something that's spec starts off speculatively right you know somebody comes up with a hypothesis uh about something and what you said is you know how how does your body know when you cut yourself that it needs to heal itself well you know your body's got this intelligence that it knows exactly what to do you know here's the thing right if you know if you eat a banana why doesn't the banana become a human <laughs> right in other in other words right when we eat a banana the banana assimilates into us right right and it becomes part of us right so so you know how how does a banana know not to do that mm -hmm. you know not to go the other way mm -hmm. right it's uh there is is a divine intelligence that's at work right the, every cell Every uh, every cell is made up of uh, atoms, uh, molecules, and atoms, and those atoms are made up of smaller units, uh, electrons, protons, neutrons, and it goes all the way down to neutrinos, the smallest part. Okay, each of those components are vibrating, right? There's no, even though there's uh, uh, science has, you know, validated that there's chemical mass, right? It's very difficult to actually put pinpoint it, right? Uh, and when you look closer, that mass is uh, is ultimately a vibration of of um, either sound or light or whatever um, the perceived. Um, a vibratory particle it is on the electromagnetic spectrum. So it could be, it could be um, uh, visual, it could be audible, or it could be outside of that range altogether, right? Mm. Uh, so the, the point is, is that you've got all these vibratory particles. Each of those particles can also be referred to as sound or light, but ultimately they're these units of energy that are vibrating, and that's all it is, mm. which kind of give it a manifest a mass around that with some kind of gravitational pull, right? Mm -hmm. Hence it's measurable to some 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 minute degree, right? But ultimately it's just a vibration of energy. Now, if it's a vibration of energy, uh, essentially what we are is uh, what you can refer to as a uh, uh, vibrating light or vibrating sound, right? Depending on where you're looking at this on the whole electromagnetic spectrum range of things, right? And ultimately that's what we're made up of. So even though we, you know, you pinch yourself and you think, oh, you know what? I am solid, you know, uh, there is there is a tangible material here, but actually each, each, uh, each uh, molecule is made up of multiple atoms, which, you know, go down to the, the smallest unit. It's just vibrating a vibrating uh, a, a vibration a vibration of energy and that's all it is and in that vibration of energy it knows how you know to create this shape of the hand to create this shape of the face to create this body the way it is and know where to kind of congeal blood to block uh, a cut in your body to stop it bleeding mm. it's far beyond our comprehension doctors can't explain it although they understand things like you know the uh, the effect of blood um, uh, blood. Uh, uh, I forgot. They'll forget the word now. When it hardens up to stop uh, stop the bleeding, right? Um, as opposed to the blood being too thin, so it doesn't you know stop bleeding, right? Uh, it knows. It knows. And you know how that happens. We we it's. I don't think we understand all the physiological processes that are happening inside us, you know, and that's just on a physical level. Mm. You know, there's mental processes again that we still don't understand. Um, you know, up until uh, you know uh, the last few decades, you know, neuroscientists thought the brain held all the memories, but now they don't think it does, mm -hmm. right? And I can tell you, it doesn't.
uh, because it's all out in the cosmos. It's out in the ether. And that's yeah, just, what the Akash is re- referring to. Yeah, so it's, inter- it's, tra- in- it's interesting that you were saying about frequency and stuff. Do you, do you reckon that we are then like antennas to some degree that if we're able to radiate in f- uh, that kind of frequency, we are able to tap into this cosmic storage and, um, you know, um, yeah, tap into all sorts of things from there as well? 100%. Hundred percent. I mean, <clears throat> uh, an example of tapping into uh, cosmic storage is, is first and foremost is just recalling a short term or a long term memory, right? If it's not stored inside us, then it's stored outside of us. If it's stored outside of us, then this vessel is accessing that memory from mm-hmm. somewhere. But if you've ever had a memory, uh, if you've ever had anything like past life regression and I'm a qualified instructor in hypnosis, right? And if you've ever gone on a process like that, you'll, you'll, it'll blow your socks off that the, the memories are, are not just uh, separate from you. You live it when you, when you see it, mm-hmm. right? There's emotion stored with it, right? It's, it's a living, breathing experience that you had way back when, mm-hmm. right? And that I think is kind of one of the one of the strongest points that that can help you understand that there is something bigger at work here. Mm-hmm. And I think you know one of the things is that if you're not if you're not aware of these things, is to keep an open mind about these because you know science is there still yet to try and prove these things. There's studies in psychic studies, in mediumship, uh, and um, other spiritual studies around our spiritual aspect of our, our of ourselves that you know is uh, has been ongoing for hundreds of years, if not thousands of years. You know our ancient scriptures talk about these in a lot of detail you know if you look at something like the Bhagavad Gita for instance um, it's it's, you know over 5,000 years old and there's accounts of that in there if you look at the Egyptian texts ancient Egyptian uh, texts and the hieroglyphs it talks about uh, spirituality and accessing higher realms there right and it's all through the mind uh, which is why you know with the all there's all all usually some some uh yogi that's pictured in some way shape or form that's trying to access the the source through the mind um and you know bringing it back to martial arts you know the, ultimately that's what we're trying to do you know and whether you realize that or not it's um you're cultivating your body so that you learn how your body works, right? You're cultivating your mind so you so you can use your mind to uh, control yourself in a better situation. You know, um, you're learning to control your emotions so that you you don't are not manipulated by somebody that uh, can sway your emotions. Uh, you're then uh, you know you're controlling your fighting spirit, which is the the uh, the bridge between the body and the spirit. Okay, is that that bit that uh, that part of you that um, keeps you going on when your body says no, I've had enough, right? When your mind says no, I can't do this. When your emotions say no, nah, no, nah, this is this is this is too much. It's hurting, you know. I don't like this, right? And there's something else that keeps you going. It's your fighting spirit, and then beyond that, you got pure spiritual form, right? Your energetic self, right? Which which is something way beyond that. Now, you need to cultivate all of those because otherwise you're never going to be a whole martial artist mm-hmm. uh, because you just focus on physicality, right? And maybe a little bit of mentality if, you know, you're lucky. But, you know, in my experience, having run a martial arts school for uh, well over a dozen years and been involved in martial arts for, um, you know, a, a large part of my life, uh, one of the biggest things I can say is that um, – 95% of my students uh, join my martial arts group because there's some some trauma that they need to heal. So that trauma lives in the mental body and the emotional body, right? And it skews the spiritual body, right? And that's why there's incongruency. That's why there's a disturbance in the force, if, it, mm-hmm. if I may, you know? Yeah. And that needs to be corrected. So how do you correct that? You correct that by learning through movement. So you realign your body and that's realigning the mind and the emotion and the spirit automatically, right? But you don't realize that because there's different modalities of learning. And it's a kinesthetic learning modality is martial arts because you learn through movement. You're learning techniques, you're learning, you're learning movement, you're learning to face fear, you're learning your physiological responses. There's a whole bunch of stuff that's going on. And when you're doing all of that, 
then what's happening is you're training all of those faculties, but ultimately you're learning to know yourself first, mm. right? Physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. And uh, th that stack is working that way. Um, traditionally in the East, uh, when martial artists used to train, they used to train the spirit first. Mm. So you train your spirit. So you learn how to connect to your spirit, connect to your source, right? Then you had to teach somebody else that, right? So you had to become a teacher in that. Then they used to uh, train their uh, mind, right? And when they cultivate their mind, then they have to teach somebody else to cultivate their mind. So they have to act in a teacher capacity. Then they had to cultivate their body. Mm. Um, then they have to teach others to cultivate their body. And the fourth one was to then learn combat, right? Only after they've learned the stack of spirit, the the mind and the body, then only combat, and then you could teach somebody else combat. So you had there was an order in which that this had to happen, mm. right? Why? Because it teaches you morals and ethics and r responsibility and ownership for what you're doing. You can't teach somebody that's mentally unstable, right? How to how to potentially maim, uh, injure, maim, and disable or kill somebody. Right by teaching them deadly martial art te techniques, when you know that you know that they then they they're not responsible mm. uh, uh, and they don't have that level of accountability because they don't know what's what's going on because they're not in a good place, for instance, or yeah. there's a problem inherent problem there. Uh, so you can't teach that person. You shouldn't be anyway, right? No yeah. matter how much money they're putting on the table. You know. So so in the West, you know, we go the other way up instead of going top down like in the in the west in the, uh, in the in the in the um, in the east sorry but in the west we can bottom up right we start straight off with combat and we deal with the rest afterwards yeah, yeah. but you know in order to teach the other elements you have to know them the team know them right so it takes a lot of work so if anybody that's invested time in martial arts it takes years to cultivate you know it, there's no quick fix it's not you know um, a, a fast food uh, restaurant where you go order something and within three minutes you got it you know uh, mm -hmm. i mean i know there are there are some students that do pick up things quickly but to have that uh, as a, a second nature subconscious reflex takes takes time right and a lot of practice and repetition to get in there uh so as a consequence uh you know when you have to do the same thing with your body the same thing with your mind same thing with your emotions and same things with your spirit mm. you know uh, and uh, just to give you a simple example you know uh, all of us got triggers triggers that um yeah, kick off uh unresourceful behaviors you know maybe it's a sibling that presses a button that kind of makes you angry right um maybe uh is somebody at work whoever it, wherever it might be and you know you might not respond uh in the the highest way possible if i was to put it that way uh or the most graceful way possible um and um you know if you become aware of it then you can start cultivating that do you know what it might take you a year might take you two years might take you three years might take you five ten years right to cultivate and deprogram that behavior and reprogram a more resourceful behavior mm. right uh, but it takes practice, and I think that's what really needs to come into play uh, when when we're talking about the martial element is is using the the same uh, approach that you use to cultivate physical techniques into cultivating uh, mental techniques, emotional techniques, and spiritual techniques. That's absolutely fantastic, Lex. I think let's leave our viewers on a very, very deep thought, yeah? So, you know, you're talking about how we tap into this cosmic um, storage unit, yeah? <laughs> I like when, now we may not know the answer to this. Maybe some people do. I don't know. I'm just putting it out there. So we got the element of the body, right? And and you're, when you grow through your life, uh, you get your experiences, your memories and all that kind of thing that you've experienced in this life are... Um, some that's related to the current body, right? But then you have something where we talk about the soul as well, right? The soul, um, which um, we don't know a lot about kind of thing, but we do know apparently a source of unconditional love to some degree, or it's, it's a connection broken off from the divine. Yeah. Do you think that um, when we were talking about past lives and tapping into these things and the, sto and, and the memory of where things come from, do you think that the soul somehow is a storage unit of itself, which brings your your record into your current form so you can actually access it um, as well. Well, we don't know the answer to this. We're just putting it out there. Let's just go crazy with it. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I think you know, I think that's a good question to put out to the the, the readers. Uh, you know, how 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 does your soul access that, and how does it carry that on from one life to another life? Um, being a medium, I can tell you how that light continues. But I'd like you, I'd like to leave that with you, as JT said, so that you can kind of like dig a bit deeper into that. But there is a mechanic that does happen. When one, when when one soul is freed from one physical existence and then reincarnates onto the next, there is a transfer of energy, and when that happens, there is something that is going on there. But more importantly, what do you think? I think the I think it's a, it's a valuable question. The other thing I wanted to just add is, you know, from a techn we we live in an information age. We live in a technological era, and you know, uh, we as human beings are trying to always trying to get back to our spiritual selves. Mm. Right. And we don't even realize it. And I'll give you an example in technology. There's something called cloud storage. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right now, now cloud storage is storing something. I mean, there are hardware servers somewhere, right. But it's storing something that's separate from yourself, but stored um, in a centralized uh, location, which you can access from wherever you are. Okay. Now our t technology is already trying to mimic exactly what our cosmic storage mechanism is already been doing for us naturally since the dawn of time. Okay. Uh, so I just wanted to kind of bring uh, a bit of a reflection onto how we are implementing that currently in our technological age right yeah. now. Okay. And you've got, you know, Amazon storage, you've got other, you know, uh, Azure is Microsoft's and uh, there's a whole bunch of other providers that, uh, that do cloud storage. But, you know, essentially what they're doing is mimicking what cosmic storage has been doing, doing right from the dawn of everything yeah absolutely <laughs> I, and we know technology wise you know that storage of things is getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller you know you can put memory put like whole whole vast thing in, in a little dot of you know storage so if we are like you said mimicking that what already is happening as they say as above as below kind of thing yeah you know how much of what we're doing i love that how much of what are we doing as a human race is reflecting on what's actually going on beyond our senses but we're trying to mimic it because we're, we're trying to probably zone in or tune into that element of things fascinating I, you know what just on that point if i may uh blow your mind and you know this is and like i said i hope our, our, our viewers can keep an open mind to this because uh you know we're gonna i want to share things that uh, i've received the messages i've received from my own um awakening and uh, as part of that process one of the things one of the clear messages i had was actually kashik storage cosmic storage is all happen all happens in a hydrolyzed state okay and hydrolyzed state means it's in water now we've all scientists have already discovered that water has memory now you can look at you know amazing um um people like dr masuri Emoto, for instance who i was very lucky enough to meet before his uh, passing uh that he discovered that water could water can store thoughts emotions um whether um, and even words uh you could you could you could say words to water and it will know if it's you're saying positive or negative things to it and yeah, it will have crystals changes within the the water the water crystals change right yep absolutely absolutely and in you know what if i if i may share in my master your life book there's a, a section on on that where so this is yeah. um a picture of a crystalline water structure okay and that is for the emotion okay well, so just just for the viewers who are listening on a podcast what uh, see for like is showing are, are um the, the the crystals within the water and the shape they take on based on the words and emotions that are expressed on them that's right and these these are again a different uh different um water um crystals for for different words that were spoken to uh, glasses of water um, and there were certain words like love um, um, and hate and you fool that were spoken out loud to uh, you know um, uh, 
uh, vessels with water in it. It's just a glass of water, for instance, or a bottle of water. And uh, the the water was um, uh, frozen at um, a really high speed. And those crystalline structures that formed were photographed by really high speed uh, and um, uh, with a high magnif magnification on them so they could see what the water crystals, how the water shape the water crystals for forming. And what they discovered was <clears throat> um, uh, that the water was storing emotions, whether it's positive or negative. And on top of that, um, there's other studies that were also uh, also uh, ongoing and some have already concluded that you can use water uh, uh, something like equivalent to a droplet of water that can store more data than our current supercomputers that we've got right now <clears throat> now if that's the case then and our cash is made up of water then quite clearly we mm. can store, you know, a, a cosmic amount of storage in there from wow. everybody's experience that ever was uh, and ever has been, right? Because it's it, it, there's an infinite amount of storage there. And, you know, I wouldn't be surprised in whether it's in our lifetime. It'll be, it'll be amazing to see that. Uh, but if it's not in our lifetime, hopefully, you know, the um, technological progress continues the rate it's going at because the last 50 years it's been absolutely amazing how quickly technology has advanced um to to point to the point that you know if if we actually start getting into the realm of water storage devices because if that's the case you know we're going to change the way computing works and quantum computing is already a thing mm -hmm. and there's some amazing research and there's some amazing material i do exp uh, encourage you all to have a look on youtube for com quantum computing and how it works uh, and there's already technology that exists that uh, is currently under implementation but when quantum computing starts to kick off i mean you are talking light speed computing power mm -hmm. right light speed computing power and you know the the these uh the and I, so earlier on we spoke about how you know science and spirit are two sides of an indivisible coin okay now the the science behind that is quantum physics right quantum meaning spiritual physics being the science but they just call it quantum quantum because they they they're trying to quantify it right they want to quantify something that they don't wholly understand because the intelligence is way beyond us. Mm. And even if we did see it, experience it, and I, I can tell you from my personal experience that there's no words to describe a lot of that stuff that's going on. Right. It's, 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 yeah, it's, it's, fasc it's fascinating. And maybe, and maybe that's why the ancients use crystals for yeah. all sorts of funky things. Right. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's, it is part of me that kind of almost uh, wishes that you know science 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 doesn't discover the innate secrets and it will not because it's just so much is way beyond us uh and i don't want it to in a certain way because we're going to lose the innocence and the simplicity behind it <clears throat> um, and also you know the human nature is to then take that technology and try and control things mm. now there's obviously going to be you know if we look at it from a binary aspect, there's going to be a positive outcome for that technology. But for every positive use, there's going to be a negative use. And you know what? I'm not scared about it. But at the same time, um, you know, that technology can also be used to manipulate people. And, uh, you know, I'm quite against that because I think that's, you know, infringing on your innate spiritual freedom. Right. Let alone your emotional, your mental and your physical freedom. Right. But the spiritual freedom is one that you know you, no one should touch, mm. uh, and and everything else as well. You know your physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual freedom should should remain intact and should be sacred to each and every person. And we should respect that in each other. And um, you know, coming back to martial arts, one of the things that you know the Bushido code is teaching us is exactly that: to respect that, respect all of those uh, attributes within us. You know, Absolutely. and uh, so that? yeah. So, you know, you know us, we can go on forever and go so deep in these conversations. Um, and I think we'll have to save some of this for next time. <laughs> right? And, uh, <laughs> Most definitely. Definitely, definitely. Any, any last words before we uh, sign off this, this time? 
No, I think I think the uh, the question that you posed uh, about the Akashic Records and how you think that you know uh, how how people uh, how the viewers and the listeners think that the uh, our our Akashic Records are yeah, are how they work how they pass from one soul um, into into another life, for instance. I think that's 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 a powerful question and it'd be interesting to see people's experiences you know spe- speculation is one thing but if, if people have had experiences it's even better because um it's you know it's you can't take anybody's experience away from them you can't argue with somebody's experience because it's their experience they've felt it they've lived it they understand that Mm. And there's a lot to be said about that. Uh, like I was mentioning earlier, there's schools for mediumship, there's schools for psychic studies and so on that, you know, there's a lot that people do understand, but they, there's a lot that they don't understand. There's more they don't understand. You know, it's like that iceberg. We haven't even scraped the tip of the iceberg, but underneath that iceberg, it's massive. You know, it's nine, ten times bigger than that, maybe more. Uh, and that we don't know because it's underneath our our uh, our peripheral vision where we can't see it uh and nor do we know it so uh yeah it'll be interesting to get your feedback and um and comments so uh you know i hope that our our viewers and listeners uh enjoy uh this podcast i hope i hope it gives them food for thought and um you know you come back and join us for the uh for the uh, for the next podcast and if you've taken any value away from this podcast what i'd like to um uh, ask you to kindly do is to uh, share it with um, family and friends and loved ones that you think will value from this and hit like and subscribe um so that you know we can continue to spread the the wisdom and the love that we've got to give so um thank you guys yep. thank you Jake. words out my man there you go folks like comment share and we'll see you in the next one so thank you very much likes thank you very much everyone and we'll see you in the next one